Thank you so much, Madam President. Uh, Madam President of Moldova, uh, Mr. President of the European Council, dear colleagues, dear partners, today and every time we prepare and make decisions uh, for the sake of our Europe, for the sake of our values, we must remember that every doubt we show here in Europe is a trench that Russia will definitely try to occupy. Whether these doubts are about vital security steps or doubts about our unity or maybe about our ability to meet the challenges of our time, every doubt brings more insecurity. Here, uh, here in Moldova, luckily we don't hear air raid sirens or the sound of Russian artillery. But not so long ago, Russia's rules were unfortunately convinced that between the evil they brought to Ukraine and the occupation of Moldova, there were only a few days a week at most. And now they think the same way. But we act, we all, and this brings more security. Since February 24th last year, the limits of security in Europe have, in fact, been the limits of our determination, our ability to act together for the sake of the interests of our peoples and the whole Europe. As much as we can reject doubts, we can reject the evil of aggression. There is no one among us who does not know what solutions Europe needs and needs really now. The first is a full-fledged defense against Russian terror, both on the ground and, of course, in the sky. Russian missiles claimed the, the three, three more lives this night in, in our capital in Kiev, 10 injured, one child killed, in addition to the hundreds killed by Russian terror earlier, at least 400 and 84 Ukrainian children killed by Russia. There are two decisive components now, a coalition of patriots that will put an end to Russian blackmail by ballistic missiles, and a coalition of modern fighter jets that will prove that terror against our cities has no chance. And I thank those who are helping, those who understand that every step in air defense Enforcement is literally saving lives, and the speed, the speed of forming these two coalitions, the coalitions of Patriot and coalition of modern jets, is literally accelerating peace. The second is the full power of our unity. We do see who the aggressor is, and we see where the aggression is taking place. Russia is afraid of NATO and its truth and tries to swallow only those who are outside of the common security space. And Russia tries to live a frozen war on the territory of its neighbors if it fails to swallow the entire neighboring country. For example, why? For example, why is the Russian contingent still in Transnistria? The Kremlin only needs it to unfreeze the attack on Moldova one day. How long will Europe tolerate this? This question is already more than more than thirty more than thirty years old, and it is worth answering. There should be no place for any frozen and or hot war on our continent. Recently, a Chinese journalist asked me why NATO. And the answer is very simple. When there are no security guarantees, there are only war guarantees. We haven't heard about possibility of the security alliance between China plus NATO plus Ukraine, but we need peace. We need just peace. That is why every European country that borders Russia and that does not want Russia to tear it apart should be a full member of the EU and NATO. And there are only two alternatives to this, either an open war or creeping Russian occupation. We see what is happening in Belarus. We see what is happening in Georgia. We see how these nations are being dragged, although in different ways, into the same state of lawlessness. But what do 
they see. If even Ukrainians who are proving our commitment to freedom, to freedom and the values of a united Europe with blood have not yet heard a clear positive answer about joining the EU and NATO, the hopes of the others are becoming completely elusive. Think about this this disappointment and the disappointment of both our soldiers who are fighting for freedom and those nations for whom our struggle in Ukraine is their, is their, is their hope. And this year is for decisions and this is the short point I would like to emphasize. In summer, in Vilnius, at the NATO summit, the clear invitation to membership for Ukraine is needed, and the security guarantees on the way to NATO membership are needed. In fall, on our accession to the EU, clear positive decision is needed, and we are also preparing for peace summit, which will guide the world majority to implement the joint peace formula. And it is a global needed. The time has come, and the doubts must vanish. Positive decisions for Ukraine will be positive decisions for everyone. A security base is obviously for Moldova. It's very important in the long run for, for Georgia. And I have no doubt that over time for Belarus as well, and thus for European peace, because there will be no trench of doubt for aggression against anyone, anyone in Europe. And I thank all of you who understand that Europe must be so far-sighted to be truly peaceful. The Ukrainian approach is obvious and the most open. We openly propose the peace formula and its points are obvious. We speak openly about the importance of NATO and the direct link between the a reduction of our doubts and the expansion of our space of real security. We openly, openly say that only a strong air defense, namely the coalition of Petros, namely a coalition of modern fighter jets, can defeat Russian terror. And it's real life in which we real each day live and fight. This is the openness on which our Europe is based. One of our main joint principles. These are facts, obvious facts, openness and honesty. Now we need decisions. Thank you very much for invitation, Maya. Thank you very much to you for hosting us and thank you for your attention. Long live Europe. Salute Moldova, Slava Ukraine.